Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to the BR422 EMU on the Rhine Ruhr Austin line. Let me just quickly get things going here because we need to get going. Stick the key in and then put the passenger lights on and then we can open the doors. And we'll also, we won't have the cab light on because it's a bit too bright and it's quite dark outside uh, because I've set it for a autumnal kind of day. Uh, we will have the spotlights on though, we'll just dim it down a bit. Just in case we go on any tunnels. I'm not sure if there's any tunnels or not, to be honest. Uh, passenger doors are open. Put the instrument lights on like that. Uh, do we need anything down there? Wipe speed up done. Uh, we'll put the air conditioning on. We're not going to have the C for or PZB system in this run. I could put C for on, but it's more of a naggy annoyance than anything else. And the PZB system is something that you need to spend quite a bit of time with to learn properly, so... I'm not going to do that in this video. In this video, I'm just going to show you the line and talk about it. It's, the frames are not fantastic at this station. It's a very busy platform and there's a lot going on, so the frame rate's a little bit choppy. But once we get out there, we'll be fine. So, we are in um, Hagen, I think it is. Hagen Haut Bahnhof. Yes, so we're on the S8 Hagen to Wuppertal Steinbeck line. Running time should be about 40 minutes, assuming no cock-ups. <laughs> Which is always possible. Um, and we're starting in Hagen. We're heading down to Wuppertal Steinbeck. This is, like I say, the BR422 EMU. So it's an electric multiple unit. We have a total of a second, eight cars. So two sets of four um, in, in the train. Right, doors are locked. So we want to bring the... It's a single pedal. So you want to bring up to about 40% power. Uh, it's a single handle, sorry, not pedal. Single handle, pull back for brake, forward for accelerate. It's quite an easy to train to drive, to be honest with you. Um, but the German signaling is something that you have to kind of learn. So I'm just going to keep it under 40 because I can see that this signal here, the top one is the main one and the next one is the next one. So the top one was saying green-yellow. Green-yellow means uh, proceed at 40 kilometers unless otherwise indicated. And I couldn't see anything that was indicating another speed. Sometimes there's like a white number on top, um, which, uh, for example, if it says 6, that means 60 kilometers per hour limit. But I couldn't see that sign, so I have to assume 40. There are two different styles of um, signal on this line, I believe. Most of it is... What you just saw there was a was one style most of it is the other style they're very very similar to be honest a lot of it comes down to just the shape of the unit and some minor details um what is what can catch you out is there's a thing called the ne2 which is like a, a white board underneath if i show you if i see it and it looks like two two arrows pointing at each other uh if you see that lower down on the on the uh, actual signal that kind of means something like um, it identifies it's a distant signal. So I think it means not this, but the distant signal ahead is showing this. Almost like a repeater, I think. Uh, so we're turning up at Hagen Veringhausen. My German pronunciation will be an absolute joy for all you guys. Hang on, where's the... Um, there it is. Let's put that on. Uh, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Yeah, Control 7 will turn on and off the platform stopping zones. Um, it's more of a more of a kind of personal preference whether you want that. Like a lot of these UI elements, um, you know, Control 4 will turn off the stuff at the top right. If you want to, if you want to purely read the signals, um, sorry, the the signs and signals out there, then you probably want to turn that off. Uh, Control 4 will turn that off for you. Uh, if you don't want the HUD, Control 5 will just completely remove the HUD for you. Depends what level of realism you're going for. Um, personally, I don't get to spend a lot of time with a particular line to learn it thoroughly enough to turn a lot of this stuff off, so I just leave it turned on. Um, but if you spend more, you know, you would start off with it all turned on, I guess, and then gradually sort of turn things off as you get used to it. Um, VR 180 videos, guys, can I just say a massive thank you to all of you um, that watch the videos because the reception on the videos has been fantastic. We've had so many positive comments. I know the views have not been amazing, but they never were going to be for that kind of thing. But 
In particular, the Class 47 train VR180 video. Uh, you guys really seem to like it. And the comments on it were just fantastic. If you've not seen any of the other ones, like the Porsche racing car at Silverstone, or the tractor video, or even the bridge video, which was um, definitely different to my usual stuff. It was almost like a history thing. Definitely go and give them a watch. You don't need the headset to watch them. You can watch them in 2D as well. Uh, just on a normal YouTube app, you can watch them. They're, they're really different. They're really interesting, I think. And, you know, there was a lot of effort went into them. But all you guys that have watched them and commented, thank you so much. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a VR One Active video this year. But may well do one sometime next year. The obvious one, and the one you guys are commenting on a lot, is, you know, please do a truck. Um, which, you know, if I can find a truck manufacturer that's happy to, uh, you know, let me spend a day with a cab, uh, with a camera in there. I don't have a truck driver's license on the UK road, so I can't actually drive it on the public roads. But if they've got like a, a testing, a testing track, I could definitely do it on that. And that would be very interesting. Um, but then also we had comments about, um, I would love to see you do a road trip. like. <laughs> Because I think, that particularly the guys that watched the um, bridge video, where I just went to the uh, the Iron Bridge and just and you know took you on a journey, really. A lot of you saying, "Oh, this is actually really cool. I'd love to see you do more of that stuff. Um, do a UK road trip and and do some more." So that that's a consideration. That was very much an experimental video. That was that bridge video was so far tangential to what I normally do. You know, you guys are used, me, used to be doing simulation gaming videos, and here I was doing effectively a real, real world history kind of historic monument type video, which is absolutely different to anything I, I normally do. Um, but like I say, the reception was, was fantastic. Um, the detail on this stuff is so good, isn't it? Wow, the camera. The camera, like, snaps. If, if you put the camera into a, an object, like, it won't let you go behind the tree. It just snaps you in. It's so annoying. I really wish there was an option just not to do that. Just let me put the camera where I want, you know. Um, but yeah, VR180. It, you know, the videos are done. It's it's all over kind of thing in terms of VR180. Unless I want to do more. They they take an awful lot of effort. So they, they're not going to be something you're going to see regularly. That's for sure. Because they, they take a ton of effort to make. Not just in filming, like planning, filming, editing, like everything from start to finish is a lot of work. Particularly with what I was trying to do. Um, if you take a VR180 camera in the studio, in a nice controlled environment, arguably, it's really not hard to do. But if you're trying to do what I was doing, which is taking a camera which has no image stabilization and putting it in a vehicle that moves around, you know, like a train or a tractor or a race car. That's very challenging. It's challenging to rig. It's challenging to film. It's just very challenging. But results, I think, speak for themselves. Like, nobody else on YouTube has done anything like that. So that's kind of cool. Pick up accelerator. So you want to be doing like 40 to 50% initially, and then as, as the speed starts to pick up, you can put more power in. That'll make sure you don't get any wheel slip and it keeps it comfortable for the passengers, etc. Okay, let's uh, back off there and coast. If you go through the tutorial scenarios, um, they do give you some advice about coasting and braking and that kind of thing. They're definitely useful to look through. But I've set it for a kind of an autumnal day, which is a misty and rainy. Um, the weather has been an awful lot like this in the UK for the past few weeks. Like, the leaves are going brown. It just keeps raining like this. And in particular, last weekend, the clocks went back. Uh, so now on an evening, it is dark. You know, it's unbelievable how quick you go from, I don't know, like nice, nice weather. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in the depths of winter. It's unbelievable how quick it happens. Well, you know, we've just had Halloween and... November the 5th is coming up, which is uh, Guy Fawkes. How's the Parliament? Blah, blah, blah. 
in the UK, so we set off loads of fireworks and have bonfires. And the environmentalists hate it. <laughs> oh dear. Probably get banned at some point. I have no doubt about it. Um, but also November the 5th is Red Dead 2 release day. Red Dead 2 on PC. It's obviously, it's been out on console for a while, but it's coming out on PC. And I am going to be streaming it. I've played Red Dead 1. I loved it. I've been really looking forward to Red Dead 2. I've waited for the PC version for a long time. And I will be live streaming it starting on the release day on November the 5th. So if you've not actually popped over to my Twitch channel, why not go over there and give it a follow? Now's a good time to start watching on Twitch if you want to come and hang out and see me live. Because I love YouTube. Don't get me wrong. I love YouTube. I love making videos for you guys. But live is a different thing. And I enjoy both platforms. I enjoy video platform and I enjoy live platform. And on the live platform, you can just come in and you can ask questions and say hi and all the rest of it. Um, and we can just have fun. That's what it's all about. But yeah, Red Dead 2, I'll be live on Tuesday, starting at 1 o'clock UK time. Uh, Wednesday, I'll be live. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be live playing Red Dead. So if you want to see a playthrough on PC, and I've never played it, so I don't know the plot. Give it a follow. Head over to twitch.tv slash squirrel, funnily enough. Right, I'm just going to quickly save it though, just because this game, like sometimes this game, if I... If I... This game has no kind of good possibilities of recovery. If you're not paying attention, and you sort of smash through a platform or something, you, if you've not saved it, you have no recovery. There's no option to say you know, recover before last station or last checkpoint or anything like that. It has none of that built into it. So if you don't save it and then make a mistake, you've got to do the whole thing again, which I think it's very, very harsh. I think they could have done better than that. Also, the audio, um, I don't know if you notice or not, but when we start out, you can hear the audio very loud and then suddenly it's as if one of the WAV files stops playing. It's, it's weird. But scenery-wise, the quality is there. No doubt about it. Like, it looks absolutely beautiful. You know, if you live or have, have, have ever travelled on this particular line, I'm sure you recognise a lot of it. Particularly, it tends to be very, very accurate from around the track area. Once you get further away from the track, they tend to approximate things, but certainly at the track side, I think it's, it's they tend to be very accurate. I'm hoping that for Train Sim World, at some point, they will go back and do the Norwich line that goes into London Liverpool Street, which is my line, the one that goes through Chelmsford. And I would love to see them do that line because I know that line very, very well, having travelled on it hundreds, actually no, not hundreds, what am I talking about? Probably thousands, literally thousands of times I've been on that line. Come on, stop. And so I'd love to see it in Train Sim World and then I can, like, accurately assess how good it is. They did it on Train Simulator and it was not bad. But, you know, like I say, Chelmsford Station was an approximation. I, I knew where it was going when it was going past the A12, the road, but I'd love to see it in Train Sim World. The, the level of detail has been upped significantly. And the accuracy. I mean, a lot of it's down to available tooling as well. I've no doubt that things like Google Maps pays a big part now in in how people construct maps and things. You don't actually have to go to the library and start looking at pictures of things. You can actually just go on Google Maps and get satellite imagery of everything, which is just insane when you think about it. 10.34. Where are we actually, by the way? Okay, so next stop is Gevelsberg Hauptbahnhof. We're at the NAP platform at the moment. So, yeah, that means it's a... Uh, there's two stars of, of white signage there on the pole. That particular one is the secondary thing, but it doesn't matter in this game. They're both the same. As, as the, that and the mainline signal. So yeah, that's the main signal. Then if it has a box under here, then that's the next signal. 
it's fairly it's fairly structured once you get used to it. You just kind of read it from the top. Top means you must do this, and then below it is like this is what's coming. That's generally how it's structured. Structured. Right, two point seven k's. Currently on green aspects. Let's just back off and coast for a second. I do like these trains though. They are very easy to drive and um, they look pretty decent. And they're pretty good at, they're pretty punchy when they get going. Considering this is eight cars, it, it accelerates and stops pretty well. The rain effects are interesting. I think the rain effect could be better. What was that playing? I was playing another game which has the Unreal Engine and the rain effect and it was superb. But, just like in this, the sky box is the worst thing. I don't know if Unreal doesn't allow you to do a good sky box, but I did notice in the Unreal games that I've played, sky boxes tend to be a bit meh. They seem to be like a flat 2D picture. Okay, we are 900 meters away. start breaking at like 500 I think. Okay, let's get the brakes going. It must take a lot of practice for a driver to get really good at braking. I know that when I did the um when I did the Class 47, um, when I drove the Class 47 in the VR180 video, they actually sent me the um, the line. What do they call it now? It, it shows you the line uh, from start to finish, but from like a side point of view with all the um, with all the climbs and drops. I forget what they call it now. It's got a, it's got a particular name, but it shows you the stations on route, and then it shows you the height. Like the altitude that it gets to, and therefore the gradient. And you have to you have to learn that. Like as a driver, you're supposed to memorize that. Well, you have to memorize that so that you know what's coming. You, like even before you get anywhere near the train itself, you have to study that. So I think I think train drivers, you know, they do a lot more than people think they do. You know. I think they, they have to learn quite a bit of stuff, a lot more than what the average person might think. Maybe I should go and talk to... Um, maybe I should go and interview a train driver and a train instructor and kind of um, do a little video on that, like what's involved, the kind of things that they have to go through in order to become a train driver. Could be cool. Maybe I should do a TV series for the BBC. <laughs> Right, 700 meters to the next stop. That is very close, blimey. Look at this. You get going and you're stopping again. Galesburg Kip. We've had a nap and we've had a kip so far. Two different stations, one called Nap, one called Kip. I'm, I'm beginning to think everybody around this town's a bit a bit sleepy. Okay, unlock. Next station is Gevelsburg West, 1040, so another short hop. At that point, we'll also give it a very quick save. Just in case. I wish there was a hotkey. I literally looked in the control bindings. Like, what is the hotkey for do a quick save? Is there an F5? Nope. Couldn't find one. Wow, these houses are so close to the platform. I could not imagine 
living so close to a train line. You know, it's not so bad with electric trains in terms of the noise levels. Like, if you imagine when the diesels used to rumble through here, I can imagine that noise factor was pretty horrendous. But it's not even so much that. It's if a train comes barreling through here, you can't help but feel it. There's just so much weight travelling down the tracks that if you live in that house, you'll feel the vibrations of it coming past. And that is not something I would like. Wow, this is a very close platform. This thing should be a tube service. Four hundred meters. Are we branching off by any chance? Nope. Oh, that's the bypass line, fair enough. Yeah, so we come into the middle to actually stop at the station. So, interestingly enough, going this direction, there's a there's a, a track that you can bypass, like a through train. But on the other side, there isn't. Little barely on the stop, but that's fine. Okay, left side this time. And this is Gablesburg West. Next stop is Schwelm. Schwelm. And then Schwelm West. 1045, 1047. Final destination is 1101, so we've not got that long left now. Another 20 minutes or so. And so far, so good, eh? Let's lock the doors. Yeah, in the original train simulator, you quite often got um, challenging scenarios, which I used to really quite enjoy. Like, they, they were very hit and miss, but some of them... Some of them were really challenging. Um, there'd be some kind of a, a problem, and you'd have to go and recover a train. So you have to take your train up and recover it. They have some things in Train Sim World, but nothing like what they had in Train Simulator. And I kind of feel like that's one of the aspects they didn't do as well in Train Sim World. And also, I'm still wondering, when are they ever going to do the whole third-party support thing? When are they going to open up the, um, what did they call the engine? Sim something. The engine they'd written underneath. When are they going to open that up? And will it be properly scriptable? Because that's what I'm really, really waiting for. I just want third-party devs to get their hands on an engine that they can not only develop, you know, tracks for, but actually develop proper trains, like sim-level trains, that they can properly script and code. A bit like you can in the flight sim world. Like, I don't see why that is not a thing. But having full script support would mean they could do some very interesting stuff. Ooh, tunnel. Yay. Okay, so green, yellow aspect. That means you can expect to slow down. Or is it 40k limit here? No, it's not 40k limit. Let's turn the wipers off a second. Off, there we go. Maybe there was a speed limit sign above it, I didn't notice. That's a cool little tunnel. Right, back out into the rain, wipe it back on. Okay, so top sign, green, yellow. Next sign, green. And there's no speed displayed on it which means 40, 40k limit, so we better slow down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm speeding. I didn't act quickly enough. By the time my brain had interpreted what it was seeing, the green yellow means 40k, unless otherwise indicated. And my brain didn't process it quickly enough. Uh, it's not derail territory, but it's definitely a misdemeanor. 
because we were getting shunted over. The signs were there, the signals were all there, telling us exactly I should have gone 40. Right, 1.2Ks to the station. So now we're on the wrong side, in quotes, aren't we? We're driving, like, on the UK side. This is weird. Now I'm not sure which signal I'm supposed to look at. Do I look at the one on the right? Which has two yellows, meaning red's coming up? Or do I look at the one on the left? See, there's the red signal. But this has got a, a green on it. So this is really confusing. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Maybe we're supposed to look at the left signal now, and the one on the right means they've closed the track on that side or something like that. That's so bizarre. Anyway, we're 500 meters away from stopping, so let's get ready for that. Wow, this train only just fits through the... That's a very interesting way of getting to this platform. <laughs> it kind of feels like some crazy extension that they added on at the end. Like, how can we get this line from there to this station? Well, we could go off on the left lane, then dive down, go under this thing, and come back up there on the left platform. Yeah, that works. Let's do that. Okay, we made it. That's the main thing. 10.45. So we are a little bit late now, I think. We're supposed to be at the West Station at 10.47. So I'm, I am actually running behind schedule now. I've lost a bit of time on the way. Okay, let's get locked up. I don't know if we're going to be able to claw this back. There we go. Come on. Schwelm West at 10.47. Let's try and go full speed. I like this over the shoulder view though. It is kind of cool. And you can really see the detail on the train. Like, look at the water on the glass. Whereas the water on the front glass is weird because we're going at like 100 k's, which means the rain should be going up, but if you actually look at the windscreen, the rain is running down. Took a bit of a gamble though. I think it I think I've blown it. <laughs> Trying to make up time as best as I could and I almost blew the platform. <laughs> Heavy braking for the wind. That's not good. Uh, you might have to jump from the front door. <laughs> yeah, we're starting to lose points here for being late now. It's all good. Wuppertal Langefeld is the next stop. 10.50. See, I do like these um, S-Bahn type lines, you know, the frequent stoppers. It, make, it makes you work a bit more. But I wish... I wish it was a bit, a bit of a combination, you know? I wish there was some stopping and then some, some bits where you could really, you know, let the train stretch its legs a bit, like really get going. Also, the line doesn't feel as busy as I think it should be. I've seen, I think that's like the only train we've seen moving so far. I've seen a couple of parked up at the stations, or stopped at the stations, but I've not actually seen stuff moving around. And I kind of feel like a line like this. Look how many lines there are here. How many tracks there are. I kind of feel like um, there should be a lot more going on. I have a question for you. Transport Fever 2. 
for those of you who are still listening. And thank you, by the way, for still being here. Transport Fever 2 um, is something I'm definitely going to play and stream. I am in two minds whether to make videos of it. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? I did play a bit of Transport Fever 1, but I kind of got a little bit fed up of its limitations. TF2 looks like they've essentially addressed a lot of limitations, so I am interested in, in it, but I'm not sure that to make videos. Green-yellow means 40 coming up. Speed under control. Doing some heavy braking because I'm trying to claw back the, the timetable as best as I can. Yeah, there you go. Green, yellow aspect. Oops, one, one. that one. But Transport Fever 2 looks like, I don't know, my kind of game in terms of the, your ability to... You can build out stations, which is just... Oh, thank God for that. We're not limited on stations now. You can actually build as many lines as you want, put as many tracks in the station, combine passenger and freight uh, in one station. And then you have to... A bit like Transport Fever 1, you have to kind of look after the... Um, look after the cities. Um, demands like what they need uh, and if you if you don't deliver the city will shrink and if you do the city will grow and that kind of thing which is everything about you know things like railroad tycoon and all that that I used to love why we're not moving come on I just love that kind of game you know so I will be streaming it and I do find it really fun to stream because it's highly interactive but equally you can you can play videos of it in a playthrough, but I don't know if uh, that's what you want. You know, so let me know. One point three k is away. I've got a German friend, and if I if I told him that my train was going to be about a minute late. He'd actually say to me, wow, so you're early. <laughs> okay, let's get the speed down. We need to be down to 50k soon. Ooh. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> That was very close. I think we went through about 57 through that um, that, that point. I'm sure that's that train that passed us. Feels like it's becoming... We've gone from like the rural side of things and it's getting more and more uh, built up, I think. That's what it feels like. Let's give it a quick save. It definitely feels like we're coming into the big city now, look. Why is that iron bridge thing there? Oh, I've seen that on the thumbnail. There it is. You see it at the back? It's like a hanging... It's a really weird thing. It's transport where they've built a massive frame and then they're hanging a box. It's just such a bizarre thing. But it has the advantage if you don't have to lay road or track. As long as you don't mind this horrible bridge system above. Which looks distinctly ugly to me. And also, just one car on it. That's bizarre. One point eight Ks. It's cruise. Upatal Barman. Very close to the des destination now. 
Looks like the rain's backed off a little bit. Whoa, look at these buildings. They're pretty authentic buildings. Seven hundred meters. So if you turn off the um, that stuff top left, you literally have to know where the station is. Like if you turn off all the HUD elements, you're going to have to memorize when to slow down, when to stop. It's quite a challenge. Oh, this is a good stop. That's a very good stop. Not left. Do you know, I've been on one of those. You see those trains over there? I've been on one of them, but I didn't go in the upper deck. And I wish I had them. Okay, let's do that one. So we've got a couple more left. 1057, 1059, 11, I was messing about with the control left key. If you go control left, it sticks your head out the window like that. If you go control right, it goes through like different views like this. Right, see if we can cruise there. Have a look at some scenery. 1.4Ks, 90K limit coming up but after the station. don't like the way the camera does this through the uh, bridge either. Like I say, I just wish it was an option. Like, ignore, you know, just clip through objects. Stop trying to dodge objects with the camera. Find it annoying. Okay, let's get ready to slow down. It's a pretty good line, this. I mean, if, like I say, if you add... The fact you've got three locos that it focuses on on this line. Add that to the difficulties of then enabling PZB and learning the signaling, and you've got yourself quite a challenge. You could, the repellability is definitely there. I mean, the idea of these things is really that you go again and again until you learn the line. And then just remove the HUD. Industrial, isn't it? Look how many chimneys there are, blimey. But they do look like copy-paste kind of buildings, don't they? Some of them over there as well. copy pasta chimneys. That's the sign, that there. That's the sign that you see at the bottom of these things. Nine, there is a nine, 90 kilometer limit on the next signal. So it's below that one, which means not now, but the next signal, there's a 90k limit. And you can tell, like, top right, it says the same thing. Nine's on the track as well. There you go, it's dropped down now. And then 60 coming up. The six on the ground I just saw. So we'll just cruise. You have to drop speed. And then there's a 50 coming up as well with the five. 
So yeah, we're gradually getting slowed down, I think, as we come into the main um, up to ban off, I think. So we're getting to 60 first. No idea what that beep is. Get it under fifty. Go. Oh, this looks pretty cool. Definitely need to see more people at these platforms, though. Actually, there's quite a few on that platform. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yikes! Oof. That was very, very close. Arguably overshot that. Let me just quickly uh, give that a save. <laughs> Not that I have any expectations at all of, of you know, cocking this up in a minute, but let's just do that for now. Yeah, two, top right it says we're two meters away, so I actually was before the signal. I've not actually entered the block yet. Right, let's lock the door. Okay, final destination coming up. We actually need to, need to beat this guy, though. Right, we just need to pay attention now. This is a lot is about to happen in a very short space of time. Now we've got a 90k limit in 400 meters, which I don't quite understand because the track, unless it's suddenly going to get faster just before we have to stop, that's a bit weird. I'm kind of expecting to be... It says 10 though. I'm expecting to be shunted over. Unless we're direct into the platform, which it actually looks like we are, so fair enough. Better safe than sorry, is this late? Cool! Somehow, we made it. Why is that one offset? That's so weird. Nice. That will do, donkey. That will do. Unlock the doors. So we're a little bit late. Um, 11.03. Which is when we're supposed to... Actually, we're supposed to depart at 11.03.04, which means we're only about 20 seconds late, if that. So that's a fairly good timetable. And that was a very interesting line, I thought. Let's have a look at the summary page in a second. See how we scored and see how we did on the graph and stuff. Lock the doors. Should be it, then. Okay, performance graph. That's not bad. A little bit of headroom there. Just about got in the speed drop there. That's where I, um, that was the worst part. Where there was a sudden drop in speed to change change uh, track, I think. We remember when it went to the left, I think that was that bit. And that was just a bit of overspeed going on. But other than that, I was running up fairly well. So that's not bad. Uh, stopping accuracy. Looks like I was in within eight meters or so every time. Look at that, 0 0.079 meters. <laughs> it's like eight centimeters accuracy, like a glove. Um, time taken, 43 minutes, 27.8 kilometers. That's the total distance of the... Um, actually, it's supposed to be 42 Ks of track. So if I just did the length here on, on 28, there must be a lot more to it. Maybe on the other lines then. 
Uh, that was the S-Bahn line. Maybe the main line is uh, another 20-odd again. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the BR422 on the Ryan Ruhr Austin line. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to leave me some comments about um, Transport Fever 2 and VR180 stuff. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy training.